how, how does one call the meeting to order? You call it, you say, I, I call the meeting to order at 507. I call the meeting to order at 507. I uh, want to welcome you all uh, here to the meeting. Um, thank you for being here. Can we just go around so I can try to remember everyone's name? I know Nathan, but... Yeah. Uh, Sam Hooper. Sam. Rodney Rainbill. I'm Bethel. What kind of represent the Warrior Valley School. Thank you. Hi. Um, Lane Ellison. Heather Muller. Nice to see you, Rodney. I know we've emailed, but I don't know if Yeah, and, and I haven't gotten an email for a while. But, oh, but I heard Robin was just, just making sure you were on the list. So yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, and I happened to be talking to <laughs> Lisa Floyd this week, and she was like, who you representative? I'm like, oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should go. That's funny. Well, thank you for being here. So, and Robin? I'm Robin Denikin. I'm Nika's administrative assistant. And I'm Nika, and I'm the director of RTCC. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go down the list here and kind of give you some updates. There are some places where I really would like some input. Um, so the first thing is a staffing update. Um, currently, we have one new paraprofessional that started um, last week. They are working three days a week. They're fabulous. Um, but we are currently down two paraprofessionals. Um, one of them is going, one is going through the onboarding process, so if all goes well there, we'll have basically one full-time paraprofessional and one for three days a week, and then we are still going to be down one paraprofessional. So I am um, interested if anybody has anybody that you would like to, um, you know, tell them that there is a position available. Um, okay. We have um, been very... Uh, We've been really paying attention to safety in the building. Some various things have come up during some practice drills, and that has led us to um, have the door locks be permanently locked all the time on the classroom doors. Um, one of the main reasons of this is that uh, bays are open at various times throughout the day, which makes the building you know, potentially open to people from the outside, even though the front door is locked. So classrooms are now completely locked for safety. Um, so that's one, I, I believe it's an improvement. Um, we've also had, instead of having students throughout the building in various locations having lunch, we now have everybody in the cafeteria area. And outside the cafeteria there are picnic tables, so basically in the place where we are all um, observing them at lunchtime instead of being throughout the building. And most recently, um, our exit doors uh, have been uh, undergoing inspection by the fire marshal to make sure that all of the exit doors are appropriate exits, uh, given the fact that the rooms are locked now. So for instance, there was an exit door that was beyond a locked door. So now we are looking at where the new exit location should be with the fire marshal to make it really good and the people who are in the classroom already can still use that as an exit but we're just making sure that there are plenty of exit places um, so increasing safety all around any uh, questions I mean, the classroom doors being locked that doesn't yes not an issue with the fire marshal or no. emergencies they, they open out or whatever it must be they no they open but they're not locked. But the people out. that are in can get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, without oh locking. yes, it's just that if there was an intruder in the building, they can't open the classroom doors. Okay. So from the inside, they can open it, but and not and get the out. outside. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I guess so. That's, I was kind of thinking the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sure. I, I mean, I assumed it was okay. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now you're gonna make us have to go check. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's, that's how it's set up. Oh yeah. No, it it definitely works that way. Um. Okay, so yes, so the next topic is our current enrollment. So our goal enrollment for next year, or our goal enrollment for as soon as possible is 150 students. Um, but right now we're at 142. Um, so we've had some students come in and some come out. That 130, 42 includes eight Raven kids. Includes eight Raven kids, oh, mm -hmm. thank you. So we're 134 RTCC. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. One, 134, so 134 <coughs> yes. So 134, Thank but then you. the other ones are Raven. Yes. Um, and like I said, our goal is 150 
um, there are really positive implications um, for the, the school if we have 150 students um, in the future. So we definitely have room in some programs and some programs are full. So it really depends on what program you're interested in. Um, but programs that have availability would be um, <coughs> culinary, um, dental, um, education services, there are a couple in construction. Um, I'm just thinking about any other ones. We have some openings in pre-tech. Which ones have the, the biggest waiting list right now? Ag, um, auto. Am I missing anything? Ag Video. Yes. Digital film. Digital, Digital film. film. Thank you. Yep. Is auto and diesel the same? No. Two different programs. So is diesel full but steady? Or? Diesel is not <coughs> full. There's okay. still some room. Um, they're having a great time. They're working on uh, restoring a tractor uh, from 1969, a 1961 um, antique boat motor. Um, they do small engine repair, uh, snow blowers, um, generators. <coughs> ski doos, snowmobiles, all that kind of stuff. HVAC, and, all that. Um, they they have there? not okay. this year yet, okay. but they will be opening up to the community and anyone who's interested in having some machinery fixed, you know, that cool. kind of falls into that can, can do that. Um, okay, so that's where we are. That brings me to um, something that I could do some advice on, which is that our flatbed, and now I don't have a ton of details, in terms of numbers, but we have a flatbed truck that uh, totes our um, culinary uh, food truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so apparently it needs quite a bit of repair. I've been told that the repair is very significant and it's an older vehicle. And so there's sort of a question of repair the vehicle versus buy a new used truck. And so I'm, I don't have numbers for you because I don't know exactly what we would buy or how much it would be, but I'm wondering in general what you all think about f repairing older vehicles versus buying a newer used vehicle. Is the flatbed used for anything besides towing? Uh, it's used by the Ag program quite a bit quite as a bit. well. Okay. And uh, Auto uses it to scrap mm -hmm. or pick up okay. vehicles that are um, not drivable to retrieve them for repair. Would the repair be able to be done by students? No. no. Okay. So there is a cost for labor. Yeah, it's all Big body cost, work that needs sure. to be done. Um, the quote that we got at the end of last school year was 4,800 and change. Um, and then when Jason Ladd was going through it, um, to check on inspection, found more like rotting through the floorboards that it was not noted on the original quote, so it would actually be higher than that. You think in 10K to be safe? Like overestimating? I think potentially, yeah. Do we think that'll make it passable for inspection? Is that what we're thinking? Because <coughs> I know flatbed trucks are not cheap, so mm -hmm. that's the other down side of things. Mm -hmm. is, uh, I don't know how big of a truck it is, but no, you're right. It's like a new one is sixty thousand yeah, dollars, sixty seven. Used. I'm saying used. You know, um, that much? Probably. Oh my gosh. Well, you could probably, yeah, maybe get a good use on for forty five. Yeah, I was gonna say thirty to. So it 50, sounds you know, pretty clear that just repairing would be making well, sense, right? Well, maybe on how many miles are on it? Yeah. Like, how far do they travel with it? Yeah, yeah, I know it's probably pretty local, but yeah. You kind of have safety concerns too when they go on an old truck that's on the road. It's, right. I don't know how old the, the truck is. Sounds like we need more information. They do a little shopping around and see mm -hmm. what we got. I don't know if it's okay. possible, but if we can get an older one from down south with less salt, that would probably oh, last yeah. us a lot longer and okay. clearer than getting a, a used, an older used one from around here. But just how big of a truck is it? Uh, large. Yeah. Well, they're hauling a cow with it, so it's pretty good size. Yeah, yeah. it's a big truck. Uh, food truck's huge. Too. Yeah. yeah, it's um, like a big camper. I might actually have it listed. But it is on my list of RTCC vehicles. 
And then if we do get a new one, is that going to need signage and yeah, all that kind of stuff? So there's that little extras that we'll have to go into. Mm -hmm. Right. I know you guys need signage yes. on your other vehicles. Mm -hmm. Now you can also, you know, it's a weird economy right now, but maybe some of these bigger construction companies wouldn't mind donating um, a flatbed or a used one um, be incredible. to the tech center because it's for education and mm -hmm. learning. And <clears throat> I know the trades are really hurting right now. Absolutely. Um, it have to be like a pretty big firm like Kingwood or something big. I believe Donald it's an 05 Pike. Chevy Silverado 2500 black. That's our flatbed. Okay. That must be like, is that a one ton? Basically, yeah. 2,500 is actually three quarter ton. Three quarter ton. But you probably want to get a 2,500 or a 3,500 would be a one ton. Yeah. Well, we can, okay. you know, and, and for bigger companies, that can also be sometimes considered a donation and a tax write off. So. For sure, that's what I was thinking. If anyone out there would like to donate a truck, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> well, if you list what we use it for and what, what it's used for for the kids, um, you never know what's going on. That would be amazing. All right, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next uh, piece is, so we have an idea. I'm very excited about it. Um, so I'm trying to lay this all out. So. I would like to start two separate academy programs, and we call it academy program because it's going. It would have a higher academic expectation than um, the typical classes that we offer at RTCC, and it would have a direct pathway to college programs um, and to dual enrollment credits. And so, this acad these two academy programs, um, we would like to see them um, be in two different two different subjects. The first being animal husbandry and veterinary science with a direct pipeline to the veterinary technology associate's degree at VTC. The idea would be that um, we would hire a second ag teacher and that person would work on um, animal science, veterinary science, um, being becoming a farrier, um, using a wool to create fabrics, um, having horses, chickens. It would be in some ways therapeutic for the students to be able to work with animals, as well as really great for students who are interested in pre-veterinary programs. Um, I think it would be a huge draw and is something that I'm not aware of uh, existing specifically in that way in any other tech center that I know of. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. So like building a barn and starting slow with a couple of horses, some maybe some rescue animals, chickens, and then expanding out um, into cows, making milk, cheese, goat cheese, all so these different things. would be on-premises? That would be awesome. That's the idea, so that's right here. Okay. Um, okay, the second one is an outdoor education program. Um, and there is a Bachelor's of Science in Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism from VSU. And so um, this would be potentially a collaboration and partnership with VSU. Um, it would play to Vermont's tourism uh, economy and um, it getting uh, people out into, you know, hiking, uh, becoming a um, a ski, oh my gosh, I'm losing the words. Um, well, yes, a ski instructor, but also like the medical folks that work. Patrol. I like, yeah, okay. ski patrol, thank you, <clears throat> I can't think of the word. Um, ski patrol, ski instructors, um, learning how to uh, become a park ranger, um, use the natural resources that we have to make money. So, um, and including hospitality and tourism in the program, not just about how to teach people to do these outdoor recreation activities like kayaking and you know fishing and all these different things, but teaching them how to make money off of it. Like, how do we start? How do we become a bass fishing instructor? How do we become um, a person who works year round of maybe making uh, mountain biking trails? And in the winter time, their ski instructor. Um, and how does this tie into the tourism um, kind of field here in Vermont? And 
and the reason why a lot of people come here and why they're moving here. Um, so basically, the the idea is in its infancy, but the idea of the academy program is that there would be an entrance exam, so you would have to score a particular score that we would set on math and English so that your reading and writing skills are high, as well as your, your business skills, you know, your math skills. Um, and then as you take the program, as you participate, you're going to be out, you're going to be doing co-ops and doing real world things. You're also gaining credits and it's a direct pipeline to those college classes and those, those degree programs. So um, I was curious about your thoughts on that idea. And are these two-year programs? Like if someone comes yes. in as a junior, <coughs> I would say it would, commitment it, would be, it would be great if that was the case. We haven't specifically talked about that. I think it's a great idea and a concept. I like the idea of an entrance exam, something maybe a little bit more advanced, uh, getting into the college. I do know there's a need for it, especially in the veterinarian science. Yeah. Uh, my only question would be, is RTCC committed to keep doing that? I'd like to know what their enrollment is, because I know they're going through changes. Oh, VTC? VTC, yep. excuse me. Uh, VTC, um, being that they're part of uh, the three schools combined, I just right. want to make sure like, if we set this up and we get it running, we're good for two years, and like, hey, we're not offering that anymore. And if, if that's if that's the case, that's fine. Does Norwich offer something? Does another college would we would have like a backup or a excellent? Degree? That's a very good question. Thank um, you. I like the tourism. I like the outdoor education too, because even if we um, group in, like I know Randolph had a hard time finding um, a, a coordinator for the town to do youth sports, daycare, summer camp. Yeah. Right, that would right. tie into it. So that would tie into it. <clears throat> also I, becoming a biologist or, or biologist. An, a PE teacher and mm -hmm. out, environmental scientist of any kind. Yeah, it, exactly. it all kind of ties together. And the hospitality is really important. So I met mm -hmm. a, a lady who actually teaches hospitality and sales coaching out of Waterbury this week. Mm -hmm. And there's a real need for in the hotel business and the hospitality realm to find people that that's really interesting. It's really interesting. So, but I do like an entry exam. I would like to make it really fine tuned for individuals that would want to take it seriously. That's it. Like you, you hit it because so what we have um, is you know we have a big say we have a big class. A lot of the students don't come here with the skills in math and reading and writing to be highly successful, highly paid skilled workers. Mm -hmm. They maybe could have the skills to work in production, but to to move higher up, they need a, a different level of math and ELA than they think they need when they come to the tech center. And so we want to sort of change that narrative and say, tech is an alternate pathway, but it is an education. It's not an, an easy way out of school. It's just a different path. And we want people to leave here with an equally good, if not different type of education and hold those expectations high. I mean, it'd be great if we could also include work in the summer in these fields and oh, work with employers and empl um, can say, hey, we got someone training in this field. They need on-hand training during the summer, so their interest day, you know, we have this expectation of hourly rate. Mm -hmm. you know, these are people that took an entry exam, like Right. Committed, right? I imagine that kind of what you're saying, like I imagine that there are mountains around, you know, even Killington's not that far, um, or other closer mountains where people Stowe, Stowe, yeah, yeah I mean, there's tons of where there are places where they need workers that are trained and skilled and ready to go, where we could even rangers. set up. Yes, they could probably use some help, from what I understand. Um, so I like to do that. My only concern is if we build a barn on premises and we have animals, who's taking care of them when the school's not open? We would pay a student to do that. Okay. I'm sure that there, I can think of off the top of my head several students who would jump at that. Okay. Um, I have a student who wants to volunteer um, to maintain horse stalls um, and get no pay. They just want to be with the animals because it makes them feel good. Give her my stepmother's name <laughs> who has horses in a barn. Um, is, is she in Randolph? Yes. Interesting. Um, okay. Okay, and building trades could build the barn, right, Lane? Technically? It could be involved. It depends what Vis Visbit says, fire insurance carrier. And how does that affect your plans of a new facility? Because we well, want to make sure that if that goes forward, we want to tear it down. And so there's the location oh, yeah. potentials, <laughs> there's, there's two depending upon. Okay. The easiest that's right on campus is where the old Raven building used to be, which is at that far end, because yep. we still have the water 
So we have to hook up there when we had to demolish the old building. We also have the acreage that's out towards Brain Tree. There's an acre out there that was donated. Um, it was used at one time that they actually started building houses out there. It might be nice to preserve that to continue to do that. We just can't really encroach on the, we don't want to encroach on the athletic fields. Well, that and on our neighbors, that's, that's around yeah. um, the I'm sure there'd have school. to be permitting and. Yeah. Right, and all yeah. that, and make, you know, animals make noise and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, um, hey, the kids do too. Fun. Right, <laughs> but they're not at four in the morning with roosters when the sun comes no, up. No, that's like a very true thing. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I love the idea because mm -hmm. more than just dairy and farming. It would but really be a magnet getting... program. Right. Kids want to work with animals. Yeah. It, it, is, it is just such a calming, healing, beautiful thing. I think that, that kids really like animals. <laughs> and I think that because it's so different and unique and it's so truly Vermont, I feel like it would be really great to put us on the map with such an interesting and, and unique program. With the higher expectations and the more advancement, would the enrollment tuition be higher? Or would it be the same? Would you, would you have to bring in more staff to more than just one teacher per program um, or, you know? I think a teacher and a paraprofessional would be really great for that because you can have 16 students with a te one teacher, and then if we increased enrollment, we had more than 16 and we had a paraprofessional that could you know, take on some of that. Um, no, I don't think so. And I think it would be great if we came out of the gate with 16 students and a waiting list. That would be amazing. Well, there's a lot of tie-in yes. with the other programs, I'm sure, too, with ag and yes, absolutely. farming and yes. gardening. And, and we were even you know, saying dental. <laughs> right. Health I mean, careers and dental. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know if you've ever had the, uh, an animal's teeth cleaned. It's no. very expensive. I bet. Yeah. So interesting. But, but it, again, there's a need because you talk to any veterinarians in the area right. and they're short yes. stuff. And farriers and like, it, you know, kind of you can combine welding with this yeah. program as yeah. well. And, and there's there's such a big market in our state. I feel like it's it's like a really true Vermont program. That I think would be even board, boarding of house pets is hard to find now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, veterinarians are so short staffed. Like, but if, that's very true. Just, just remember, though, the upkeep on them is quite expensive, yes. right? If you, have, you can have your own veterinary bills, so they're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, right. you, yes. you won't be able to take care of them. Might be looked as good to see if there's any grants out there that would help cover that for education. Definitely so. on the agenda, yeah. for the sure. The other thing is, you'd have to make sure the students are really dedicated to doing it because we have paid students to water our plants in the greenhouse, and our plants come back, we come back from vacations, and, and our water? plants are dead. So, that's the other, like, you have to make oh, sure boy. the students are invested because yeah, you don't want to sure. come back to dead animals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would think you'd want, like, there's an adult that's actually the go to person that makes sure it gets done. Mm -hmm. I am sure that there is a person in the community who would love to do that. I, I can think of several off the top of my head that would be interested. Yeah, no, I think it's a good program. Just... Yeah, but you're right. Somebody has to be responsible for feeding the animals over break and on weekends. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So, <clears throat> of these two programs, my two cents would be outdoor education is low hanging fruit and super accessible for you to implement right off. Agreed. It's the fastest growing economy in the state of Vermont and it's um, the number one push for all state funding right now to continue to develop that. There's a grant program called the VOREC grant. Which what is it called? VOREC, V-O-R-E-C and that Thank you. It was started by the Scott administration uh, a handful of years ago. Randolph was the first one to receive the grant, us in Newport. The grant at that time was worth $50,000. Now the grant is worth $5 million. Really? Oh my God. So that's where the effort at, at the state level wow. funding is being put. So, mm -hmm. and the need in the outdoor economy for professionals coming in as bike mechanics, trail builders, trail yeah. bumpers, whatever, is immense. And so in terms of the infrastructure and overhead, that's easy. We have a lot of that infrastructure already built here in Randolph. Um, the animal husbandry thing, 
in animal science, I think is great in terms of the need for veterinarians, mm -hmm. uh, animal vets. Um, I really caution not to make the same mistakes that VTC has with their dairy program and their farm that they had in Norwich, which they ended up having to sell. So there's a lot to learn from that whole scene right up the road. If you are to embark on that, I would strongly urge you to use their facilities that are already existing built oh. right there. That's, I, I'm unaware of this, so thank you for bringing that up. Another thing with the, I'll, I'll go with Sam on that one, is maybe crossing over more ag too, because maple sugaring is a great adventure to get into. Um, we do. We do currently do that through so our ag program. Yeah, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of maple companies in the country, not just in Vermont, and <laughs> it's a very lucrative business if done right. Um, and there's other agricultural okay. programs out there as well. So, but in terms of the academy, yeah, I think that's a great concept. Yeah. Um, entrance exam. You're supportive of the entrance exam piece? Totally. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's other things that this could open up. I mean, I was just visiting my niece and she's going to go to college to be an x-ray tech because there's lack of x-ray techs. Yes. You know, and we just had to talk about that today. Yeah, different avenues like that. I mean, low-hanging fruit, you know, something like that. We got a hospital in town. Mm -hmm. Same with the hospitality aspect, too. We have a hotel going right up on the hill. So... That could be a huge connection with Absolutely. the outdoor trail rides and stuff that they... Do they have a completion date for that yet? The foundation's being poured, I think, right? Or is it has been uh, started? Yeah, it, it'll be... Next. Because it'll start and stop. They're going to... They'll do... Uh, site. They're doing site work and slab work this right now, but then it'll pause for winter, and then it'll be full bore ahead um, so spring. March, April. What a great opportunity for co-ops yeah. through that project. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And Randolph really has grown as an outdoor recreational hub. It's really, and it, it has more potential, so he can help mm -hmm. facilitate great. that with students. And yeah, and the next, okay. in the ne next summer, they're doing they're building the Velamont Trail, which is a mountain bike trail that's designed to be like the long trail that goes across the state of Vermont. It's really? supposed to connect um, different communities, trail networks, and we have five trail networks here. They just completed the Rochester side, which is the other side of our chapter called Ridgeline Collective. This side will start next summer and will be a lot of effort around connecting our trail systems to that trail system over there. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so do you spell that with a V? Vel yeah, Vel uh, Velamont. Yeah. Okay. Oh my Phonetic. goodness. I wasn't even aware of that, and that is so exciting. It really just all comes together. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Um, okay, just, I don't know if I have more time here. Uh, yeah, we do have a little more time. Okay, uh, an update on work keys. So we want to let you know that work keys testing is complete. Um, oh dear. I thought I double-sided, double-side-printed this. I did not, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so th there was, I was intending to put something on the back of your paper. Um, adult education is going to be starting back up again. Um, there's a survey that's going to be going out very soon, and um, new adult education programs are going to be starting after the winter holidays, and so we have a survey that Lane is going to get out to the community that is going to give people a huge array of options to see what they're interested in learning about and whether or not they themselves would be interested in teaching a course. Um, and so our adult education coordinator will be working on that. Um, we are also having a winter market. Um, it is like our Christmas fair that we've had in the past, but this year it's gonna be winter market themed. It's gonna be in the agriculture room. And I wanted to get your opinion on this. So the date is December 8th um, and starting at 10 a.m. And so some of us were thinking that it should also extend to after school so that parents can come if they work. But I wanted to get your thoughts on that. So students would run it after school? We have to work that out. Okay. Um, 
or teachers, I'm not sure. Um, but there may be people who are willing to stay late, but curious on your thoughts about extending it to after school. The school ends at 2.20, so it's really early. And the idea is to have local vendors in it or students are so the students, making stuff to sell? Yes, the students are making things to sell in their programs. So things like Christmas wreaths and like these beautiful paper lights that they're hard to explain, but they're like seven sheets of paper that are like carved out and they're beautiful. Um, I know there's lots of other things being made, but each program is going to be making things and someone is making... Um, like bottle kind of holders out of horseshoes that you can put like mason jars in um, or spices things like that and so they're really 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 nice and so all of these items would be for sale and so I feel like it would be great to have it run later so that parents and grandparents and community members can come see it but at the same time I'm not really sure about whether or not students would be available to stay because so many of them take the bus to their sending schools. So I kind of want to get your thoughts on that. Well, here's a thought that Chandler usually runs a market. I saw that. Maybe be worth contacting them and have a booth on the weekends with the products. I think, and another thing is, I don't know how Lane, it'd be complicated on the website, but could you put up a landing page for ordering forms of the products and then the students oh. can learn to package it up have it ready in the front office or, or make times. Um, you can keep Todd busy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, and, not gonna uh, be, it's not gonna be that much volume. We could probably do it through well, a Google Sheet or something. You could do it through a Google yeah. Sheet. I mean, I mean, yeah, Google Form. Um, that's yeah, really that's cool. actually, yeah. I just got done doing one for a client like that. So people could place their orders and, you know, send it out in the newsletter, do it on your social media yeah. platforms. Or they could even pick them up at the school. Yeah. Like Make the course. following send them day. Home or, with their kids or, or send them home with yeah. the kids. Yeah. yeah. And so the, rev the revenue goes to the tech center. The different programs that create the products. Cool. Yes. No, I think it'd be a good idea. Okay, yeah, were, thank you, you for those ideas. I used to do the, was it the Thursday dinners? I don't know if Robin was going to do something. I was. The culinary was, was. awesome. He's, he's, yeah hoping to start that up again but he's also doing a lot of catering yeah. so he's kind of stuck in catering world i don't know if we'll get the thursday night dinner I bring it up because he had a so good, good system for ordering for mm. that yeah uh, when we first started oh. it came through fax at the herald i just want you to know like we filled out a form by fax, and fax oh my goodness fax. Yeah. wow okay wow but it was that's very really funny like, the whole staff ordered almost everything mm -hmm. so. oh that's awesome this food is so good it's insane yeah. okay um, thank you for that. Holiday pies too, if you want to get culinary involved. A lot of people are asking who makes pies around here. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask Revenue them what they're idea. doing. Yeah, that's great. Cookies, you can do. Holiday pies cookies, and cookies. cookies, whatever. Keep you on, come and keep them busy and make a little money. For sure. All right, thank you. I will take that back to them. Mm -hmm. um, my last topic is our Sending School Roadshow. So beginning January 9th, a group of us, we've already been going to our sending schools and making connections with them and setting up dates for January when we're going to go with the food truck and we're going to do a one hour um, sort of like a, a, a demonstration uh, slash display of all of the different programs that we have and get kids really excited about the opportunities at the tech center. Uh, we're going to feed them, we're going to answer their questions and then really soon after that we're going to have the applications um, for the tech center available and ready so that it's a really quick turnaround um, so that in February we can close our application deadline and start looking at people but I really want there to be a short turnaround between when they actually hear about the tech center and see everything we have to offer to then okay boom 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 you've come now you're going to visit now we're going to do your interview and now we're going to decide and have it be like fresh in their minds and exciting and fun and you know I really and also when we do that I really want them to be thinking about this is not just a place to go if you don't like sitting at your desk and learning traditionally, you are gonna to have to work hard here. You're going to have to do your math and your ELA and your science um, and your history. You're gonna to have to still do those things. You're just maybe doing it in a different format or through different learning modules, but you, you still have to do that. And I wanna make sure I set that ex expectation so that they realize that 
this is going to be hard work, but it is worthwhile and great work that's mm -hmm. going to lead to lifelong careers and opportunities for you. Just setting the expectations right off the gate. Exactly. Can Lance do a video with students that are going through it? And just saying, yeah, it's hard sure. work, but I'm having more fun because I'm outside or I'm mm -hmm. this, and it's more hands-on learning. And maybe he can set up a camera and a microphone and just and maybe just taking B-roll, going to different classes, seeing the welding happening, seeing mm -hmm. video editing, seeing the nurse program, the dental hygienist. And, and really focus on that's the ones you need to build. I mean, you know, culinary, I'm really surprised that's not full. Um, it used to be. So yeah, maybe, I think it ebbs and flows, like in all the right. programs, I would imagine. You know, agriculture's become much bigger than it was. and True. And... You know, it ebbs and flows, I think, depending on what the kids are into. Mm -hmm. But the, the kids that are in culinary are solid. Like, they make incredible food. Right. It's delicious. And their presentation is amazing. They recently catered um, a pretty big meeting for some uh, tech center directors that work around the state, and they all met here in our fishbowl. The food and the presentation and just every aspect of it was so amazing. Everybody was so impressed. So, like... Whatever's going on in there is the most amazing thing ever. Like people need to sign up for that class. It's so good. Um, but that's that's basically it. Any questions or anything else that you want um, for me to consider? Any anything? any plans on getting in front of the parents for the importance of maybe their kid considering RCCC? Not that kids listen to their parents, but. Yeah, it's a is great there... question. So we're going to be having an open house. Okay. Is that what you're what you mean, or we have just the way to connect? We have a monthly with the newsletter. Okay. Um, we're advertising on the radio mm -hmm. for our students of the quarter. Um, do you have other ideas for reaching out to parents in other ways? Well, it's just the, I mean, typical branding mentality. You know, you've got the jingle, which I'm sure the radio station's using. Yes. Um, you know, but brand, why this might be a good fit for kids. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm looking at it for my own kids, you know. Um, is this a better fit for your kid to be successful? And mm -hmm. really, you know, pound that in that, you know, there's a lot of stigma, and I think that's why I like the whole idea yes. of the academy programs. Me like, too. That's where you're going to have to get in front of parents and say, listen, you know, your kid is getting great grades, they're really into biology and science and math, and we just, if they're interested, we have this great, you know, academy program, and you're, they can talk to students, their kids about it. You're getting me thinking about this, and maybe perhaps a parent information night at the sending schools is really what we need, and to get them to initially be interested, and then they can come and see all the amazing things that we have, and maybe that's something that needs to be done. Yeah, I mean, that could be something. Um, being that parents are very busy, a set of videos of that they can watch, maybe a youth mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. or on the website. That's just like you know, if they can't make it, maybe we record the 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 parent conferences that the ones that couldn't make it to view later. Um, That's a good idea. Kind of do a double whammy, get the students really right. excited, and then inform the parents, and then if the parents bring it up, the kids are excited. And, Right. You know, just kind of do like a one-two punch. Of, of well, excitement. right, and if it's the kid's idea, then they'll think it's even cooler. And then if the parents right. are excited about it, that's just like a bonus, you know? Yeah. The parents are on board. The students are on board. Okay. Yeah. Did Lance Thank you make for the that. promotional videos for each program? I know him and his students were working on them. New ones? I thought so. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the ones we have. I know I've I seen the ones was... from yeah. last year, yeah. which were really great. I thought they might have been working on They were really good. Yeah. Those promotional videos were one of the reasons why I was very interested in interviewing here because I saw the videos and I was like, this place is amazing. I need to be part of this. You know, they were very convincing and very spot on. All right. Anything else? Anything How's the uh, new policies going? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> the the phone boxes, I don't know why uh, I haven't done that before. It was the coolest thing. Um, some classrooms, students walk in and they just know before they sit down, they put their phones in the box. It's really fantastic. It, it's, it's so beautiful to see. Um, other classrooms are still struggling with um, other classrooms are still struggling with reminders, you know, to put the phones in the box. Um, 
there's a couple of students that have two phones, so they put a phone in the box, like a flip phone, and then they still have their phone. So we've had a few funny conversations with students, like, what, 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 that's from like 1995, what's Gotta going on here? Gotta give them credit for trying. I know, it's pretty good, it's pretty <laughs> funny. Um, but overall, I would say I'm super happy with the phone boxes and their use and the teachers buy it has been really tremendous. Um, the, the behavior rubric has served us really well so far. Um, students come in pretty much knowing what to expect. Um, and they, they don't, nobody argues about it really. It's just sort of like, okay, well this is, this is what happened and this is the second time it's happened, so now I look at the rubric and this is the consequence, and they're like, okay, yeah. Um, I would so say- So we established that expectation really for sure. well. I think so. Good. I've also seen a lot of honesty from students. Um, okay. Thank you. I, I feel like most students have, um, when I talk to them about whatever behavior is, is the unexpected, unwelcome behavior, right? Um, most students will own up to the fact that they did do it and, and further don't argue with me about the consequence. Yeah. And I know great. that during our conversation last time we talked about short, short turning the, um, the amount of warnings to contact the school they came from. <laughs> yes, and the do you from feel, 20 to 10. To 20 to 10. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, do you find that the parents and the schools are been on board? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so <laughs> um, what I'm finding is is that um, sending schools really want their students to be successful. Mm -hmm. When we get to the point that a student, that, that it may not be the right setting for a student, I think it's difficult for a sending school to kind of know then what to do next with them. Do they integrate back into the sending school? Do they do something different? So I think that there's some some growing pains there as we learn together how to best handle the transition. If it doesn't work out here at RTCC based on our rubric, um, what next? So, so going into the next school year as we iron this out, should there be more of a policy of transitioning back if need be that the schools have that know. expectation or no? I don't know if there needs to be more of a policy on our end. I think it's an opportunity for growth between us and each individual sending school because okay. some skin, the, some sending schools have immediate plans, like this is what we'll do with this student. These are the options and some are trying to figure out what to do. So I think as, as we have more of these experiences, we will have a better history to look upon and say, well, last year when we had a person return, this is what we did and it worked well or didn't work well. So because I think that that's kind of new, it seems that it's kind of new to for people to return based on behavior in the rubric. Um, we're learning from each experience and each one has been different. There's only been two so far and they're at different sending schools. So yeah, each one is sort of a different case. And so, so it sounds like though the school, the parents and the students all the expectations that we set. For sure. And, and for sure. this really hasn't been a problem. Good. No, nobody, no, it hasn't been good. a problem in that way at all. Nope. Excellent. That's really no. good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. That was a great question. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you for being here. We got to the consent, consent agenda for oh, the last ooh. meeting. And Sorry. Yes, thank you. So, right. So, the consent agenda from the last meeting minutes. Approval for that? Um, I'll move to approve. Okay. Second. Thank you. Are there any items for our next meeting that you would like to address? Um, yes, sorry, I'm late. I dropped okay. the ball and just thought it was the regular school board meeting tonight. No um, Sarah, again. Hi. Um, hi. I would like to talk um, at the next RTCC meeting about um, adult education and yeah. where you think the program is going, if there is a future in that. Yes, we actually did talk about that a little bit today. Oh, okay. Um, but I could give you the super fast recap, which sure. is that our adult education coordinator is going to be putting out very, he made it actually today, I just looked at it. Uh, a really nice survey that's going to be going out to the community through Lane, and it, it lists a huge variety of all different types of um, adult 
programs, programming possibilities, mm -hmm. um, and it asked for interest based on all of those, and then interest on things that weren't on there, and then interest as to whether people are interested in becoming instructors or participants. Um, mm -hmm. And so those programs, that survey will be going out soon, and then those programs will be started after the winter holidays. Okay. And there's like a, a huge range of interests, like Great. a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. So, and like a lot of things that you could do as a career, but also you could do as a hobby yeah. or relaxation or fun or like mm -hmm. personal improvement. And there's, you know, cooking, ballroom dancing. Yeah. But then like all other, you know, um, fixing your brakes and right. and rotating your tires and changing your oil. That's um, awesome. In with there, yeah. It's a yeah. really big range of things. It's, it's going to be fun. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to great. it too. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that was a great question. All right. That's all. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great night, everybody. When would the next meeting be? A good question. I